All right, seven five solving trig equations. So, um, seven five kind of does give students a hard time just because it really does stand out as a real uh, game changer in terms of, of the trig work you've been doing. Seven one all the way up to seven four. You guys were working with trig identities. You were using formulas um, to find uh, exact values. Now. They want you to try and shift gears here at the very end and try and solve equations now. Solve equations. And so when you're trying to solve equations here, these actually have exact, they have answers. And they could have more than one answer. Um, flashback, flashback, flashback to the uh, beginning of the year. And I had a test question. Um, you know, let me see if I can find it. Back in chapter six. No, chapter five test. Let's see here. Chapter 5, test. There it is. Let's bring this up here. You guys were asked a question. Uh, like number 6 right there. Solve the equation if, uh, when theta is between 0 and 360, the cosine of theta is 1 half. Um, when you guys were answering this question, realize there was two answers to this question, right? Oops. When you guys are working on your unit circle, if you want that cosine of theta to be one half, that's the x coordinate. So right here, as well as right there, so you had two answers there, 360 degrees. Realize that what you're being asked to do here is kind of the same thing. We're going to have more than one answer here. But since we are restricting our answers to either 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi, which is the same. Uh, amount, um, just in radian forms, uh, form, we're, we're only going to have a couple of answers here. We aren't going to be coming up with an infinite number of answers. So how do we do this here? The nice thing about trig functions, and like it says here, that um, many trig expressions will take on uh, a given value twice every period. And some of these things here that you're going to be looking at here, um, we're going to find that the algebra that we're going to be doing here is very, very similar as well. For example, we're trying to get x, if this was an algebra problem and sine wasn't here and you saw 2x plus 1, how would you solve for x? Let me just rewrite it like this. This is a pretty simple problem to solve for x, right? You'd subtract 1, then you'd have 2x equals negative 1, and then you divide by 2, and then you'd be stuck right here, negative 1 half. Done deal, right? The only difference between the algebra versus the trig is now you have sine. So, ooh, I got an idea. Take a look at this, and if we were to bring sine into this, look at how this will change. Now that sine moves on in here, now we have 2 times the sine of x plus 1. We subtract 1 from both sides, just like we did in algebra. Here, we divide by 2, which will cancel out those 2's right there. And now we're looking at the sine of x being equal to a negative 1 half. So now is the time we turn it over to our unit circle. Where is the sine going to give us a negative 1 half going from 0 to 360? Let's erase all our cosine stuff we had right here. We want the sine to be negative one half. Negative one half for sine. Let's gotta be down here, right? And sine's a y coordinate. So here at 210. And then at here as well at 330. So those are our two answers here. We found it. So now to finish up this problem, here's how we write it. We write down that x has got to be equal to uh what was it, 210 degrees as well as 330 degrees. Done. Let's move on to the next one. And solve this one. Realize if this was an algebra problem, it would look something like this, wouldn't it? 4x squared minus 2 equals 0. So how would you solve this one? You'd add the 2 first to both sides. You'd have 4x squared equals 2. Divide by 4. You'd have x squared equals a half. And then, ooh, what would happen here? We'd have to take the square root of both sides, right? So an x would be equal to, now be careful, wouldn't it be plus or minus 1, the square root of, square root at the top, square root at the bottom, so we'd have 1 over the square root of 2, which when we rationalize that, I believe we'd get the square root of 2 over 2. Hmm, so what's that have to do with this cosine here? So watch the same process. We're going to add 2. To both sides, which is the same thing we just did right there. 
So now I have 4 cosine squared of x equals 2. Then we're going to divide both sides by 4, which is what we did right there. So now cosine squared of x equals a half. And then we're going to take the square root, which will give us the cosine of x. We need to square root the cosine squared. And then you get plus minus square root of a half, which we worked out here. It's going to be square root 2 over 2. So not only are we looking for where cosine is positive square root 2 over 2, but it's also negative square root 2 over 2. So isn't that just all these ones going around the unit circle? Let's erase these ones here again. It's all of these ones. Cosine. Cosine. Cosine x coordinate. Cosine x coordinate. So we have all these ones here. 45, 135, 225, and 315. So all those angles with the reference angle of 45. So let's go ahead and write our answer in here. So x is equal to 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 225 degrees, as well as 315 degrees. Excellent. I'm going to skip right now this one here, and I want to go over down here and just do the same work in radians. Pretty simple problem right here in radians. How would we get this cosine of x by itself? Realize it's being multiplied by 2, and then you're subtracting the square root of 3. So, obviously, the first thing we need to do is add that square root of 3. It's always addition and subtraction. We're just doing algebra here, right? Then we got to divide by 2. Well, this is an easy one. Where's the cosine of x going from 0 to 2 pi going to be square root 3 over 2? Well, that would be positive square root 3 over 2. And there. So 30 and 330? <gasps> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not going to be 30 and 330. At least that's not the answer that we're looking for. Why? That's why. They want answers from 0 to 2 pi, so write their radian equivalent. So that's pi over 6. 330, that's 11 pi over 6. Okay? Is there another one down here? Yeah, right there. Ooh, this is a little bit different. Do you notice where the 2 is at this time? 2 is here. It's not outside like these other ones were here. So subtle change right there. Uh, to make sure we're aware of this, we're not going to divide both sides by 2. Notice if we start to work this problem out, we'll have 2x and then we'll have negative 1. We cannot do that. Can't divide and get rid of that 2 in there. We could have done it if the 2 was sitting out here, but it's not. Okay? So what do we do? Well, here's the approach that you should take here. Back with these other three problems that we've done here. Oops. These other three problems. The cosine of x was that, which led us to these answers here. So x turned out to be these answers. We go back over here. Sine of x was one half. So that means that x was these answers here. Same concept. x, x. So why can't we do this? Instead of saying x, let's just state what 2x is equal to. And then, if we have negative 1 here, where is the cosine going to be negative 1? Cosine is negative 1 right there at 180. Okay? Now, wait a minute. We can't say 180 here. We actually have to say it in radians, don't we? So we got to say pi. So let's put pi over here. So 2x is equal to pi. But remember, we're trying to solve for x. Now is the time that you divide by 2. So here's how this goes down. Don't deal with this 2 until you actually have it by itself and you have a statement made with x. Okay? Let's go back up here and now let's take a look at this problem. This one was a little bit beefier than the other ones here. Let's see how we can attack this one. Now, I'm not sure what this is trying to get me to do here, but I know 
a lot of algebra. And one thing I know about the algebra here is if this looked like an algebra problem, notice I developed an algebra problem for all these, the first two examples we did. What would the algebra problem look like here this time? It looked something like this. 2, and I'm going to use a to represent sign. So I have 2a squared equals 5a plus 3. So do you notice what we have on our hands is a quadratic equation? And how do we solve a quadratic equation back in Algebra 2? When you had to solve a quadratic equation, we had to set the equation equal to 0. So 2a squared minus 5a, oops, not minus, uh, not plus 3, it would be minus 3, would be equal to 0. Notice what I have written here. This is me subtracting 5a from both sides and subtracting 3 from both sides to create 0 over there. Now, Factoring a quadratic was kind of tough when that leading coefficient was not 1. What we end up doing here in this position, we end up guessing and checking, didn't we? So if we try and guess and check our way, 2, that's prime, so that's easy. We can just say 2a times a. And then 3, that's prime, so let me just guess here and do uh, 3a here. And let's just put out 1 just like that and see if this worked out. If we do outside, we have 2a. If we do inside, we got negative 3a. We don't get negative 5a. Uh -oh. So what do we do here? Let's move the 3. Let's put it over here with the A. And let's put the 1 right there. Now, let's try this. Let's do a, let's put a minus right there and a plus right there. Notice the outside, now we get negative 6A. And inside we get 5A. Uh, inside we get 1A. So negative 6 plus 1 would give us negative 5. And so you notice we foiled this here. Now, I'm going to... Pause it right here, and remember, this whole algebra that I just did here was based on the fact that I was letting the sine of x be a, and I was doing substituting in there. Let me re-substitute all those signs now and show you the work again for the first row only. So if I just work the first row here, take a look at what I have. So we get this, with sine squared now and there where the a's were. We can still factor these numbers you see here in red the same way that we just did this down below. So allow me to jump ahead here a little bit with the factoring. Take a look at this row right down here. What would that look like? So then what you can see here is me taking this factored form of a quadratic and just replacing them now with signs in their places here. Now what we can do is just what we did down here in the past is we'd say okay 2a plus 1 could be 0 or a minus 3 could be 0 and then we just solved each one. We would say okay a here was negative 1 half and a here would be 3. Right? So let's do the same thing here. Let's set 2 sine of x plus 1 equal to 0 and sine of x minus 3 equal to 0. And let's solve each one of them. All right, so on the 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0, get x by itself. Well, I get the sine of x by itself. We go through the quick process here of subtracting 1 and then dividing by 2. Notice we'll get here is negative 1 half. And then we can use a unit circle and solve this answer. Now remember, this one here skipped over. We're doing this in degrees. So then x has got to be equal to sine negative sets third and fourth quadrant. So we should have here, uh, what, uh, 210 and 330. So there's half our answers right there. Or is it all of our answers? Go back over here. Look at this. This is strange. Notice if we get x by itself here, or get sine of x by itself, we'll get sine of x equals 3? What? That's not possible when you look at the world of the unit circle, right? You can't have anywhere here the highest you get is 1. Right? So we can't get that here. So that makes that different, a little bit different in the trig world as opposed to the algebra world here. So basically this answer is nonsense. So then the only answers we have here is this right there.